baby. We gotta win this one. Out the jump, let's go. Let's go, man, let's go. Here we go. This is about to be a lit day today. Hey, let's get back to our swagger, come on. All of them get the dough down. They get the dough down. Okay, meet at the quarterback. It is exciting times in the great state of Minnesota as Minnesota Vikings football commences for the 31st time in franchise history. I'm Gabe, that's Tatum. Welcome inside the TCO studios for another edition of The Audible. And now for a wild card edition of The Audible, we bring in a wild card of guest, uh, Mr. Ben Lieber. Uh, I I was going to say something nice about you, but I don't have anything nice to say. So I'm going to just talk about That's fine. I'll try, to, I'll try to win you over in this short segment. <laughs> well, Chad Greenway is, uh, is also our, our guest for today. And uh, guys, I appreciate you both for joining us. Uh, this is um, exciting times, like we said, to start off the show. But I want to get things started off with this. Um, you guys have played in five combined Vikings playoff games together. Um, how would you describe just a Vikings home playoff game? First of all, when you say that, I get immediately disappointed. Okay. Because yeah. play, this 11, is only play five. 11 years and you, you play in five. It's crazy. Um, so it just shows you how hard it is. It shows you how hard it is. We had some very good teams over those years, and it shows you how hard it is to, to get in the playoffs. But to get a home game in the playoffs is even harder. It just It's so much parity, so many good players, so many good teams. Um, but the Cowboys game at home for us um, that we played together with, uh, in um, was the second loudest game I've ever played in. Wow. Um, it was the most fun I've probably ever had in a football game. And uh, when you get a, home, a playoff game at home, the energy is just is different. And it's, it's electric, it's a different speed, it's a different level. Um, you simply can't prepare for as a, as a player. And I think uh, the fans bring that energy and you know, I probably hit all the main points, but yeah, if you have anything different. I got nothing to say. Yeah. I got nothing to say. <laughs> but ben, but ben, and ben plays really well in home playoff games, just so everybody knows. I, 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 yeah, I made a couple of plays in that in that Cowboy game. No, I'll just echo the same things that Chad was saying. I mean, it's, it is special, and um, you know, they're, we're hearing from a lot of guys saying like, oh my gosh, this is my first playoff game. And so it, I, I hope they really soak it in. It's hard because, right, you, you don't want that to be a distraction, you know, because there is still a game plan that you have to get ready for. And you really, everything gets ratcheted up. Your preparation gets ratcheted. Like, if you think that you're preparing for the regular season games, like, you don't want, want any stone unturned for these playoff games. So um, it's very intense during the week. And the nice thing about being at home is you do store, sort of, like, pick up on that energy through osmosis through the course of the week. And then, you know, Saturday hits, and you can just feel this energy yep. building. Mm -hmm. And it is kind of nice that it's, it's like the perfect time. Like, nobody wants to play that first game on primetime at, like, 7.30 at night. Because <laughs> yes. mm. you're at home in, in the hotel room, and you're just, like, geeked up. You're like, <laughs> how can I calm down, yep. you know? So I think this 3.30 kick is, like, perfect. probably perfect. Sleep in a little bit if you mm -hmm. can and go out there and execute the crowd. We know U.S. Bank Stadium is, is one of the best, if not the best environments um, in all the NFL. So I'm keyed up for it. I can't, I can't wait to see um, how the crowd affects what the Giants do, and they will. They absolutely will affect the game. So I have to ask you then, what is the loudest game you've been a part of? Loudest game was that same year uh, in New Orleans. So mm -hmm. we don't want to give the Saints okay. any credit, obviously. Sorry, um, Sorry I didn't so bring So we'll that purposely up. go out of the way to not, get, not talk about that team. Yeah. That's fair. Um, but, I mean, th the preparation around that playoff run specifically, um, we worked with a local company to even give us um, listening devices in our ears because wow. while playing. Because we knew the crowd was going to be significantly louder in New Orleans, obviously going on the road, and, and the offense had to deal with that. Um, it was... It was a level like you can't explain to somebody. Like I can't put in words um, what that experience was like. It was an amazing experience. It was a loss. And I get asked that question a lot about that specific, that, that specific loss. I was like, when you grow up, when you know, like we did, small town South Dakota, played nine man football in, in a town of 400 people. It's like, you don't care about if you lost the NFC title game or not at the end of the right. day, because you made it right. the NFC title game. But that was the loudest game for me by far. I mean, it was, Unexplainable yeah, yeah. how loud it was. Yeah, hand, hands down. Well, they, well, they seat 80,000 people in that stadium, mm -hmm. and everybody knows the, the culture in New Orleans. I mean, it's a party atmosphere the whole time. So um, they were ready to go. It was loud. And, you know, I don't know about you. I know there was probably other, other compounding factors to it, but you know, when we landed back home after that loss, and then I got home, it was like, what, maybe 3 in the morning, 4 yeah. in the morning or something like that? Mm -hmm. um, 
I sat on my couch just kind of like in the darkness trying to process everything. And, and my ears felt like I was just at a rock concert still. Wow. It, you know, you have that like buzz yeah. and that like ringing to your, to your head and your ears. And I don't know if that was all the tears that were, yeah. were setting. <laughs> um, no, it, it definitely like it reverberated for a long time. I mean, hours after the game, I was like, man, that was a loud place, man. Yeah. So how, how do you calm that noise down, right? Like you don't want to have any un stones unturned. You don't want to, you know, miss an assignment or miss any, like everything's just ramped up. So how do you calm that down during the week? Because you're probably not going to sleep Saturday night going into that game. Yeah, I, I think um, it does take a special kind of focus, first of all, to um, to play the game you, we play anyways. And, and to be, I always think of this helmet, right, as a sort of this room, this environment, when it's loud, like it's just you and your thoughts. Mm. And you have to, and these guys, they've, they've played a full season, even if they're rookies, and some of these guys have played many seasons, they've been in that moment where the only person that you can hear is yourself because it's so loud. It becomes so loud, you can't hear anybody. Yeah. And um, your ability to lock in um, to your thoughts and your focus is which is going to come from your preparation. So that no stone unturned, full preparation, what's this look going to give me? What's this motion going to give me? What's the personnel like? What's that going to give me? Um, to transition all that knowledge into supreme focus snap after snap after snap, whether you made a massive play on second down and now it's third, or you've just got a, um, you made a massive mistake and missed a tackle or, or whatever, your ability to move on and focus the next play is more paramount now because every mistake is heightened, every big play is heightened. Um, it, 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 it matters, everything matters so much and it takes a mental focus um, with all that going on, and that will be the difference in who wins this game is that mental focus. Yeah, and I, that, the one thing that um, I think you guys you guys know who I am. Like I, I don't I don't like to like talk about myself that much, but walking away wa walking away from <laughs> well, you got 22 minutes. Yeah. To do it. <laughs> walking away from the uh, the Saints game specifically, the one thing that I was actually kind of proud of of myself was like I remember being in the game. It wasn't until late in the game that I sort of broke focus. You know, wow. it's actually you and I having a conversation along with Jared Allen, I think, when we were, our offense was getting ready to, you know, hopefully kick the game-winning field goal at the end of regulation. That's the only time that we, we actually talked about the what-ifs. Like, we talked about, you know, something that was going to happen after the game. I would, and the thing is, I was a veteran at that point in time. Like, I don't know how I would have handled that situation if I'm a rookie or a first- or second-year player. But it was years of sort of training and getting ready and mentally ready for that. But, you know, the, the, day, the, the hours getting ready for that game, like I remember just being like calm and focused and like this is it. Like we, we can't accelerate time. It's, the kickoff's going to get here no matter what, no matter what we do. So like let's just play each play. And that was the one thing I think Childress did a really good job yeah. of. Like he'd always pounded that in our heads. And, you know, some of it's – Leslie, Leslie, his and Leslie, focus yeah. was so important too because yeah. he wasn't – this enigmatic character is going to be up and down. He was just, whew, yeah, you know, and, and I think, I think, you know, translating that into this team, that's all these tough games that these guys have played. The one thing that KOC has talked about is just, you know, playing each play, you know, and then rising, rising and getting your, your best when it's needed. And I think that they've been mentally trained to do that for the season. So um, hopefully these guys are, are in that mindset because it does matter. It really matters. Yeah, the monotony of the week helps you. You know, yeah. the, the fact that it's week 18, 19, whatever it is now in their season and even with the preseason games, you look forward to that. This is my Wednesday. This is my Thursday. This is my Friday. It's so valuable because it keeps you centered and grounded and focused just like it did week three, week four, week five. Um, you know, you know in the back of your mind what's coming. But I do think that helps with your, your ability to kind of sort of just, hey, stay calm. This is what I normally do on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. Nothing's different here, right? So that helps. You're watching or listening to The Audible with Chad Greenway and Ben Lieber. And I wanted to ask you guys as veterans with playoff experience, if you're sitting in a room with some rookies or guys that don't have playoff experience, as you mentioned earlier, which so many of these guys don't, what are you telling them? Uh, it's going to take nothing physical. And this is truly the part, part of the season where it's a full mental game. Okay. And yes, there's physical pieces to this, right? But, but your preparation is going to be all mental and your ability to focus is going to be the impact of the game. Mm -hmm. And um, you're physically good enough because we're here, right? Our team is good enough. You're individually good enough. We can get the job done. Now it's about can you go out and execute when all the chips are on the table? And that's really what it comes, to, comes down to. And, and also why it's so important to have a home game. Yeah. To have that little advantage, in some cases a massive advantage, to be at home, 
Now, you're not jumping on an airplane. You're staying, you're sleeping in your bed more. You're getting more time with your family, which helps ground you. Uh, you're going to the normal hotel prep, you know, hotel that you're used to. Um, all that stuff makes just subtle differences in your week. If anything, just to lessen, lessen the anxiety. Um, and then to go into a stadium that you know, you know where the entrance is, you know what time to get there, you know the route. I mean, all that stuff sort of matters in small, in small doses. Yeah, I, I'd 100% agree. I mean, you, as a team and individually, you belong. Yeah. Like, get that out of the way, yep. you know, right now. Like, you belong to be in this, in, in this game, in this, in this situation. So now it comes down to, you know, the benefit is playing these guys just a couple weeks ago. So everything's pretty fresh. Yep. Go back, watch the film. What mistakes do we make? Yeah. What can we expect from them? And, and the only way that you can play fast is to not think. And the only way to do that is to be well prepared. And if you are well prepared and you know every look that the offense is going to give you, you know every motion and shift that's, that's going to come up, and you're keyed in, dude, then, then you can just you know, shut the brain off and yeah. go and make plays. And that's why they, play, they say you know, playoff football is faster. You know? um, so you just, as long as they take care of their week of preparation, they're going to go out and fly around. Yeah, be fun. How much uh, does familiarity play into this game, right? I mean, you go back to the 08 season. I believe you guys had already played um, that team in the regular season. This New York Giants team, we just played them uh, two weeks ago. So, yeah, they're not in the same division, like, you know, mm -hmm. NFC North, but we've played them. So how much does that play into going into a playoff game and having that extra edge? Yeah, I think, I think it's, you know, I think the momentum from last week, the Bears game, honestly, is, is paramount because you want to have momentum going into a season. I can say, um, in the 09 season, that was really interesting because um, we lost a little bit of momentum in the last month of the season. And um, in the 08 season as well, we were we had like, we rattled off like I don't know, eight, nine wins in a row in the middle of the season. You sort of puttered in and sputtered in, and you didn't you didn't really bring that best to that playoff game. Um, in this in this case, you you w beat the Giants in a dramatic fashion a couple weeks ago. You gain momentum going into the playoffs. Uh, with the big win last week, I think that all matters, and yeah. and I and I think uh, the more interesting part now, um, being out of the game and watching the game, is how the coaches handle this. How are you going to game plan? Yeah. Do you come in with a game plan that that can win? Well, uh, I think it, I think it matters a lot. I mean, especially when you when you play a guy like Saquon Barkley. You know, for a lot of these guys. You only hear about him. You watch highlights. You play that first game, and you know sometimes these guys get they get you know they get brought up and made bigger than maybe what they are. Not not taking anything away from him because he's a special player, but I think as a, as a defensive player, now that you've played him just recently, you're like okay, I know what he brings. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I can feel, I can feel his power. You know, it's like playing AJ Dillon in, in Green Bay. You know, you got a big back, big legs. How do we gonna take this guy on? You feel that. You know, playing playing that one of those games and getting a couple of hits, you're like, all right, now I'm prepared. Yep. You know, now I now I know exactly you know when he's gonna spin or how he's gonna spin and what you know how how am I gonna attack him if I'm gonna hit him low this time. So all of that does matter getting those reps. But keep in mind they're doing the same thing to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, and uh, they're Very gonna fun. do that same thing to Dalvin Cook, which who I want to get into because. Yeah, you know, he had a, a big game a couple of weeks ago, but still there's opportunities for this Minnesota Vikings to get him involved. So being former linebackers, you guys have perspectives. So we'll have more with Ben Lieber and Chad Greenway when we come back. We are back. This is the Audible, courtesy of 3M. I'm Gabe Henderson. That's Tatum Everett. To her left is Chad Greenway, and to his left is Mr. Ben Lieber. And uh, right before we went to the break, we were talking about Saquon Barkley. And uh, as a linebacker, you know that you know facing him one time, you kind of have an idea of what he's going to do. You got to re redo that over again. But switching to Dalvin Cook, mm -hmm. getting him going. You guys are linebackers. How do you get him going, and what kind of pressure does he put on the linebacker? Yeah, he puts all sorts of pressure on the linebackers. I mean, I, I can remember a game playing against guys like a, like a Reggie Bush from from my era when I was playing against him. We were trying to go against these guys. They're so they're so impossible to stay in front of. You have to not only you know beat them to the edge. They can cut back and beat you on the backside. Then you have to cover them in pass pass routes. I mean, it is it is a tall task. And to have that's why having a guy like Delvin so it's so important to have a guy like him and then get him involved early. I think he's like a he's like the Hooper, right? You want to see that first one go in, yeah. and once you see that first one go in, watch out. Same thing with Delvin. When you get him going in the first quarter, like you said, man. I just, I think the it, again, it does depend on the game and how it's going, but. 
you got to keep feeding him the feed in the rock and find ways to get him the ball. Because I mean, obviously, we all can see what he can do. He's dynamic. Yeah, I, I think it's. I think it comes down to just commitment to to the run game. You know, you know that's that's the one thing that that you know. Okay. O'Connell's kind of talked about. There's some games because of the game flow and the game situation that like he he may is you know reflecting on it, probably could have run the ball a little bit more. And and that's kind of the the in-season self-scout on himself. I think you go into this game like with the stat you're even talking about, and from what we know about Dalvin is just let the guy go, yeah. man. Like I, I know that we are a pass centric team, but like what really gives defenses problems is finding that true balance. Mm-hmm. And you know, if we can get him involved in the pass game, you know, obviously involved in the run game, and then, you know, we can open some stuff up in the passing game. I think it's all, it's all got to be, um, you know, in concert together, and hopefully this is a, the most balanced game that we've played because I think we all enjoy watching him run, and we know the stress it puts on the defense. And also, Wes Phillips commenting that when you get down in games like this team has been doing <laughs> early on, it's very hard to establish the run after you get like that. But I'm going to switch things up to the defensive side of things. And we have a fan question show called Pick 6. And there are so many questions about, is this defense ready for playoff football? So I wanted to ask you two. Ben, I'll start with you. You see them every game close up. Is this defense ready for the postseason? Yeah, I think it's ready. And I think that the thing that I've been watching the last couple of weeks is that the, the way our defensive line has been able to create some chaos. And, and I think to play playoff football, you do have to win in the trenches. Um, you know, the games that we've lost, you look at the Dallas game, you know, we didn't, we didn't win in the trenches. You know, the, the games that we're losing, I feel, I really truly believe that we're, we're not winning uh, on both sides of the ball up front. The last couple of weeks, I mean, even this 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 Bears game this last week, you know, Dalvin was involved, you know, penetrating up front, um, even getting your hands up to tip balls. Uh, that's really going to help the secondary out. So I do think uh, those guys up front are going to give us um, a big advantage, and hopefully, you know, again with the crowd noise, they can get off on the snap a little bit quicker and uh, and really create some some havoc. Yeah, I would say that's, I mean, to, to kind of read already said, it's, it's going to be important. And the front seven is going to be where this game is won at the end of the day. I mean, our ability to make plays in our passing game is going to be because of our front, our offensive line. And our ability to, to, for our DBs to play well is going to be because of our defensive line. And our ability to can get pressure. But also, um, Jones can beat you with his feet. And that's sort of an under sort of talked about part of his game um, that I've sort of been thinking about is, is you got to be mindful of that because he is still a young quarterback. Um, he's going to be in a very heightened situation as well. If we can speed up his decisions uh, with our pass rush, that's going to be very good for us. I'm going to read this stat. Um, Eric Kendricks has the most single season solo tackles, which is 88, since 2012 when Chad Greenway did it with 98 tackles. Ooh. What does Eric Kendricks mean to this defense? Or why can't he get 11 more? <laughs> that is true. That's really the question we should that be. That is true. Well, Eric, um, I got a chance to play with Eric. Uh, just a tremendous person, first of all, uh, but an unbelievable player. So instinctive. So um, his ability to, he's like a Tesla. I mean, he gets off the line quick, <laughs> and his ability to take a first couple steps is impressive. Um, but he is sort of that guy that has the nose for the ball. He knows, he can feel it, he can sense it, he can see it. And then he makes those decisions. Do I go under? Do I go over? He's athletic enough to do both. Um, this is very good. So fun to watch. I love watching him play. Yeah, I, I loved watching him kind of run the alleys. You know, yep. when he diagnoses a play and he sees something that's going to hit maybe off tackle or perimeter, watching him just kind of navigate and find that lane because it, it's, you know, there there are there's highlight plays you're like, damn, that was that was sweet. Mm-hmm. But you get in the film room and you realize, man, for you to like key in on that and maybe that's not even your responsibility but for you to instinctively think that that's where it's going to go and you hit it like he he hits it so tight he's he's close to the lineman he's not bubbling out he's not believe it yeah if you don't believe it and you take a different route you don't make it yeah so you got to believe it see it go and he goes his his angles are so tight um you know i I'll, i'll bring up aj Dillon again you know this actually happened i think last year dude we all know how big that guy is and and I watched Kendricks take him on head on and stand him up. And I'm like, 
I knew that he was tough. <laughs> I didn't know he brought the pop like that, yep. yeah. you know, and so he, he kind of is the perfect, you know, he's the all-around package, you know. Yep. Um, just hasn't made enough plays in the past game this year that we're used to, but we've seen his hands, you know. Oh, yeah. It's we funny, when can. we've had him on the show before, he was talking about how he's not a typical linebacker as far as his size. And he talked about, like, you know, give some love for, like, the smaller, you know, yeah. faster linebackers yeah. like he, that. So. He's not typical in a lot of ways, and most yeah, of them are because he's better than the typical person. I mean, he, yeah. he, is, okay. he is far and away – um, above average in every category, and it doesn't matter. It just goes to show you, it does not matter what you look like mm -hmm. or how big you are. Yep. Um, that guy's got a heart um, that is massive, but he's got a lot of physical tools to go with it. So, uh, to me, he's the most fun guy to watch on this team. I mean, Why? I mean, well, A, I'm a backer, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> Bias. Having, yeah, having, <laughs> having, having a personal experience, just knowing him and knowing who he is and knowing what's going on in his head, because he is a quirky, funny dude. Yeah. Um, just love when he makes a play, because I know exactly what he's going to say when he goes to the sidelines, and it's something crazy. So... <laughs> Love that guy. Ben, how would you describe the way that this culture has changed since last season? Um, I think it's. I think there's a there's an equal amount of respect, um, and not to say that the old regime and the old um, staff didn't respect the players, but I think the players feel like the coaches aren't aren't just like preaching from up high, you know, and coaching down to them. I think that there is a leveling out of uh, we're going to treat you guys like like men. It, it is very cliche in this business. Like all the players, like well, shoot me like a man and do this and do that. It doesn't always take place. And I think um, I think what this staff has done is just kind of level the playing field. You know, we're gonna we're gonna coach you hard. We're gonna love you up. You know, we're gonna give you hard expectations and we're gonna let you know when you fail. But we're not gonna like we're not gonna you know make you a pile of rubble. You know, so they keep the guys' confidence high. And um, you know, I, I heard from some of the defensive players. You know, this is this year when they started off the year, they really got to know each other on a personal level, and and that was important for the coaching staff, but it was also important for the players to get to know one one another. We don't. You know, we're like a lot of men, you know, we don't share our feelings and share our personal lives, but they really let guys be vulnerable and open up. And from a lot of the defensive players, you know, it really brought the team together, at least on the defensive side, that, hey, man, we, we care about you as a person and not just you as a player. And I think that goes a long ways. Yeah. I think we got 30 more seconds in the show, so I'm going to ask both of you guys, what is one thing that the Vikings need to focus on to secure a W on Sunday? Pass rush. Mm. Yeah, 100% pass rush for me. Creating havoc for, for Jones and making some plays in the back end. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, I don't know what the number is, but we, we can't give them any sort of life thinking that Saquon can beat us. Mm. And if, you know, if it's, you know, under two and a half yards of carry, then, then so be it. But I think, you know, where we play our best is when we're smashing the run on first and second down, and then we can use the pass rush on third down and, and got to have it plays. So I'm really looking for our run defense to just squash Saquon Barkley. <laughs> we, we do that. Uh, I don't care that Daniel Jones can run the ball. He's not going to beat us with his legs uh, for four quarters. I love that. Well, um, the Vikings are 7-7 seven and seven all time in wild card games in franchise history. Let's make it eight this, one, this Sunday against the New York Giants. For Ben Lieber, Chad Greenway, Tatum Everett, my name is Gabe Henderson. See you all next week.